Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real, a three to four, 200 minute or so podcast of films that I review, the old to the new, black and white to technicolor to film, digital, all that, TV, theatrical distribution. I review it today. I'm reviewing the film Priscilla, written, directed, and produced by Sofia Coppola, who was the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola, who directed the Godfather trilogy and Rumblefish, The Outsiders, including Apocalypse Now, which is considered one of the greatest war films, if not the one of the greatest films of all time in this modern age. Anyways, his daughter knows how to make films, man. She's been making films since the early 90s, if I can pinpoint the exact date on. Early 90s. I've seen a lot of her films. She's a really good filmmaker. I like her style of filmmaking. It's very voyeuristic, you know, not very French voyeuristic. It's more on the, on the, to be honest, the Japanese side of things. You know, there's certain directors that shot certain shots a certain way, you know, where it looks like if somebody's peeking from the house down the street, you know, looking at whatever's going on in front of them. That's what Sofia Coppola's work is, but it's very personal, her work. Every topic that she tackles, there's a lot of um, personality and there's also a lot of like personal, like, what's the word? Like it, it, it gets personal. It goes in, it goes in there. It's very intimate. That's the thing. It's intimate, you know, and not in a sexual way. It's just intimate. We see the slice of life of these fictional characters, whether they're based on real people or not. Sofia Coppola, Priscilla. It's about the marriage between Elvis Presley and Priscilla Presley. Crazy, man. You know, as we all know, Elvis, man, he's he's considered the king of rock. You know, I mean, he's not really the king of rock, but he's the king, dude. Like, women love them. They threw themselves at them. Priscilla was no other, was, was, was like no other chick, dude, you know? It's it's crazy how this story um goes, you know. It's it's very dramatized, of course. It's based on an autobiography written, you know, by Priscilla Presley. And it shows the life of that girl, you know, of that woman rather. You know, she met Elvis when she was 15 or 14 years old. She was clearly underage and that's and Sofia Coppola really puts that topic in the film, you know, amongst their love affair, right? And obviously, they made it very, you know, very woke. You know, they they were very adamant at the fact that, hey, man, like, eventually these two people are going to, they're going to consummate, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to have relations, as they say, you know? And super, super controversial, if not, like, downright disgusting right but nonetheless those were the times it doesn't mean it makes it right or whatnot but those were the times but there was a lot of consideration into that factor of the film right especially down to the parents of the film of priscilla you know like they're i mean her dad was a was a captain in the u.s army or whatnot right stationed in germany that man really had his concerns about having Elvis pretty much take his daughter away eventually, you know, because that's exactly what happened in this film, you know. And those conversations between the captain and Elvis are pretty good. Like, honestly, the casting is pretty cool in this film, you know. Like, Sophia likes to cast, you know, young people and older folks, and she casts them very well. And I noticed that in a lot of her films, there's a lot of diversity in age, you know. And sometimes there's diversity in, in, like, different races being brought upon or, or highlighting certain races, right? But this one's not about that. You know, it's about love, right? And it shows us the story about how Elvis is, you know, he's he's the king. He's doing king stuff, you know, flying across the the states, doing movie sets, performing, and it's it's a wild life and the conversations are there between those two, you know, and we get a we get to see a, a glimpse of what it'd be like being the paparazzi of Elvis's life, Elvis's intimate life, his actual marriage, you know, with him and Priscilla. And there's not much of a plot in this film, really. I mean, 
it's pretty basic, you know. It, it really follows the timeline of their marriage, you know. But there are things that make the characters unique and special, you know. Elvis, it, it, it just seems that Elvis just wanted somebody stable that he can depend on when he's home. You know, if he's out on the road, for sure, he's like, he's partying, for sure. And he's getting his little beak wet, wet if you know what I'm saying, you know. And for a man of that status and all that stuff, you know, it's like, how can you not, right? And we do witness that it does happen. She knew the get down, you know. She knew the get down. So, but it's it's funny because she was like so rushed into this relationship, right? How can a a teenager really like comprehend what love is or what relationships are? I'm pretty sure over time, as they got to know each other, they matured in their own way, and also matured in the sense of like how to handle relationships, love, right? And we see that in the film. Those are there's there's some pretty good scenes that pretty much highlight those type of things, right? Because Priscilla's a stay-at-home trophy wife in a sense, you know? Like, she's just there. Doesn't really have a life of her own. She can't, like, be out there in Graceland on, on the front lawn because there's always people just waiting for something to happen. Like, like either Elvis is coming in and out, you know? Like, just waiting is crazy, you know? Like... She sees all the tabloids and she gets upset and then she has a kid and she's like with the kid and it's like, dude, like, I don't know, it's a hard life to live, really. You know, you're basically raising that child on your own. You know, Elvis is out there doing all this stuff and it sucks. You know, he's, he's a dad and then he's messing that up. He's messing all those things up, man, and it sucks, right? But it's highlighted. But much like every Sof Sofia Coppola film, for the most part, the plots are basic. It... it it, it's kind of like hiking a mountain almost, you know, it's slow, but it's steady. Sometimes it'll catch a break, but it doesn't really catch a break. Everything's just always going. And that's what I like about Sofia Coppola's Priscilla film. I would give this film, honestly, three and a half out of four tokes. <laughs> you know, I was going to give it a three, really. But I really thought about this film. I really thought about the depth that she was going in this film, you know, like, She's always highlighting women, and it's always women who are trying to, like, identify themselves early, at a, you know, early on in their, you know, early ages, right? Like, in their teens or early 20s and all that stuff, you know? Like, there's some people who are kind of lost, in a sense, or kind of don't know where to go, or they're confined in a space where it limits their capacity to, like, break through, right? And that sucks, especially if you don't have somebody who's really with you or really alongside you, supporting you, and, like, getting to know you, and all that stuff, you know? And that stuff matters. And we get to see that in Priscilla, how, you know, this girl was like a ride or die, but Elvis was an asshole. <laughs> he really was, man. He was a prick. He really was a prick. And he was aggressive and didn't have too much consideration of what he had. And he had millions. It's crazy, like, the life of that guy and the life of her as she lived it through with him and all that stuff check out this film it's on max i wanted to see it in the theaters but didn't have a chance but i would like to go see it in the theater if it's there again it's a really good film it's shot very well cinematography is great i just like how coppola like highlights features of these characters whether it's through furniture shoes even hair close-ups of hair close-ups of nails get, getting getting personified you know this character because priscilla didn't just become Pris like priscilla wasn't just priscilla she became priscilla and because of elvis elvis wanted her to be a certain way look a certain way he, he really wanted to like do whatever he wanted with this person and luckily enough for priscilla's sake you know she got tired of that shit and she was like man you know what like this guy's doing whatever he wants. Why can't I do that shit? You know, and on, on my terms. You know, why is it always on his terms? And that's what made Priscilla Priscilla, you know. And, you know, she fucking left his ass and all that stuff. And you can see, and it's cool how we see the, the how, how she looked, you know, then. And how she came to be, you know. And obviously, almost two different people by the way they look, by the way they dress up and all that stuff. It's a good character study, you know, a good person study 
Coppola did a pretty good job on doing that. Pretty cool screenplay. I'm pretty sure it's a very lax screenplay. Good film. Check it out. It's on Max. And you know what? I'm thinking of reviewing The Bling Ring. And I might review it XG. Man, I saw The Bling Ring the other day. My God, man. Those those people got what they deserve. And <sighs> it's, what, it's really a weak film from Sofia Coppola. Like, it really is weak. But you get to see Hermione act a fool, act like a hoe, you know, getting her party on. And, and you know what? It's like, go, you fucking go, dude. You, 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 you cannot help but, like, not, I'm not saying support it, but, like, you know, just, like, throw that gas. Throw that gas. All right, y'all. On to the next one. Thank you.